Welcome back guys to another episode of Decentralized Chain. It's Faraz bringing you the latest news, reviews and blockchain tech. If this is the first time you are coming across this channel and you want to find out more about upcoming projects as well as daily news and technical analysis within this space, then hit that subscribe button below and that bell notification icon so you don't miss any of my future episodes. And for my returning visitors, thank you for staying with me. Don't forget to smash that like button below. Now today, as the title suggests, we are going to be going through a tutorial on how to swap over your ERC20 tokens for PeeChain onto their mainnet. So jumping straight in, for those who don't know what PeeChain is at a high level, and it's a project that I reviewed a little over a year ago. I also had an update with the CEO in terms of progress. And really, in a nutshell, what it is, is the best of Zilliqa, the best of Polkadot, the best of Rootstock, and the best of Matrix AI all rolled into one public blockchain. Now, what's really interesting about the idea behind PeeChain is that rather than having all of your smart contracts and all of your transactions running on one main chain, what they have are ultimately child chains or side chains. And so for every dApp, it pretty much has its own ecosystem built in where it does all the transacting on that lower level without congesting the main network. In addition, it's also one of the first public blockchains to have support for the Ethereum virtual machine, as well as cross-chain support for Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin as well. Now, PeeChain, why do you want to do it? Well, one of the main reasons really behind it is today is when the token swap goes live. So as I mentioned before, you get a one-to-one -one swap. So for every ERC20 PeeChain token you hold, you can swap that over to a mainnet token. Now, why would you want to do it? Well, one of the main reasons behind it is that the consensus mechanism behind PeeChain also involves proof of stake. And therefore, by staking your tokens, you are supporting the actual network, protecting the network. But as a reward, you can get up to 20% return on investment annually. So if you're not planning on selling your tokens any day soon, and you're someone that likes to hodl in terms of project success, then really this might be the best opportunity for you in order to be able to get something back rather than leaving it on an ERC20 wallet. Now, let's jump straight in. So if we go to PeeChain website, pchain.org, you go ahead and you click on download wallet. Now, when you download that wallet and open it up for the first time, it's gonna ask you to create a wallet because you don't have a mainnet wallet. And therefore you need to put in a password, make sure you save that password somewhere safe, preferably offline. So we'll go ahead and create our password here. So I've got my standard password that I tend to use. And so we'll go ahead and do that. Right, now once you've done that, what you'll notice is you will be assigned an address right here. So if you look down here, this is the wallet address that's been created for me and the password is associated to that. And that's my main chain address. Now, we are gonna be using really only one of three options today. First of all, we're on the wallet tab. So this is kind of just gives us the overall view of our wallet this is where you create wallets and you can create more wallets as well over here. Now, the main bit that we wanna be interested in right now is the token swap. So what you then do is you go over and you click on token swap. When you click on token swap, what that will then do is it will ask you to import your ERC20 wallet in. So this is going to be the wallet that holds your PeeChain tokens. Okay. So if your ERC20 wallet also has a load of other tokens that you are hodling or holding, whatever you want to call it, and you're not comfortable importing in your key store or your private key, then what I would suggest you do is you create another ERC20 wallet and transfer all of your PeeChain tokens onto that wallet and import that wallet into the PeeChain wallet here instead. Only if you're not comfortable basically importing in private keys that also hold other ERC20 tokens. So what we do here is you can either import the key store that you can see over here highlighted or you can import the private key. I'm gonna go and import the private key because that's what I have stored. So we go ahead, we import the private key, paste that in, paste in our password, and so what we're doing here is we're assigning a password to that private key, ultimately to that wallet. Okay, we click import. And what you'll see straight away is a balance of 100 has been added. That wallet that I had had 100 PeeChain tokens, ERC20 tokens, and that's been added in here. 
Now, what we now need to do is actually just do the token swap. So literally, you can scroll down here. As you can see, we've got our native PeeChain wallet in here. If you have more wallets, they'll just appear in the drop down. As you can see, I've got a couple. Now, within here, you basically go to swap. You say how many. So here, I want to do the full amount, 100, and you just do token swap. That's it. It's going to ask you to put your password in. So you put in your password, click confirm. Now, you need to make sure that the ERC20 wallet that you are basically transferring across from also has a little bit of ether in there in order to cover the gas fees. So if you've only just created a fresh wallet with just uh, P chain tokens only and no gas, then this is going to fail in terms of in terms of sending the transaction. So you need to have a little ether in there in order to cover the gas fees for that to happen. You go ahead and you click send. OK, and then as you can see, we've got the transaction occurring uh, that you can see over on Etherscan. And then once that's done, it takes about 12 block confirmations in order to be imported in. When you go back to your wallet, what you'll then see is that it's been imported basically. So once your transaction is a success, what you actually need to wait for is 12 block confirmations as well. Once the 12 block confirmations has been passed, ultimately what then happens is you need to wait another 48 hours for it to actually show up in the PeeChain main wallet. So if you go back here, you'll notice that the balance won't reflect straight away. And that's perfectly fine. That's perfectly normal. You can speak to the admins in the Telegram channel. That is currently the wait time in order for it to all pretty much end to end show up on the on the on the main net wallet. And that's it. That's pretty much how easy it is to transfer your tokens from your ERC20 straight into your PeeChain wallet. Now, the other element here is around delegation. So in order for you to actually be able to stake you need to delegate your tokens to candidates who will then perform that protection service ultimately for the network. And in order to do that, what you do is you go over to delegate and you will have your balance in here at that point showing up. So it would be a hundred, so to speak. And what you go down here is you'll have candidates and you will then go and select the candidate that you then want to delegate your tokens to. That candidate will then go ahead and perform as the validator for the network. They will get mining rewards for doing that. And then you in turn will get a distribution of some of those profits as well of anywhere up to 20%. And that's pretty much it. So if you found this tutorial useful and you like this type of content, then please do hit the subscribe button below, smash the like button to give it a thumbs up. And also what I will be doing is if you're interested in actually becoming a validator in this, uh, in, in this instance, um, then I am also going to be going to create a tutorial on how you can actually set up a server online in order to do that. So you can then also get greater rewards for supporting that system. So see you on the next one.